something in the news related to heroin. And nobody wants to admit that there's a whole bunch of syringes around town in different areas. My name is Belinda Fowler, and I'm the supervisor of the syringe exchange program here in Syracuse. So it took us 17 years to get the syringe exchange program here in Syracuse due to politicians and stuff of that nature. So we teach healthy injection, we teach harm reduction, um, we do clean syringes, uh, we do testing, HIV and Hep C testing. If anybody can utilize a syringe, we are open for them. But we have a mobile unit here that goes out Monday, Wednesday and Fridays from 2.30 to 5 on the corner of Delvey and Fitch Street, which is on the west side of town. Um, we sit in the open lot, and we've been there, you know, ever since the syringe change program been open. So when a client come in, it's a confidential program. We don't use real names. They have a card, so that identifies who they are. We then take their card. Um, they will return dirty syringes to us, hopefully. That is our hope. And then we kind of do what a normal transaction would be. They get their clean syringes, they get mentally fed, they get cheered for, they get cared for, they get, you know, whatever we can do for them, we do. They get information, and that's kind of what's important. They are family, and we do look for them. We worry when we don't see them, but then when they come back and they say, hey, I'm clean, I look good, their skin is good, they're just vibrant, we get excited and we celebrate every single one of those people. And we are the first person that they're going to come to and say, you know, I lost my kid, I lost my job, I got beat up, I'm, you know, I'm scared. I mean, there's been times that people have literally come bleeding, and we are giving them first aid kits, and we are giving them tampons, and we, you know, giving them all that we can. There's a lot of stuff going on that you never get to see, or you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just mind-blowing, it really is. I worry about um, all the young ladies that are really truly homeless. If they don't make it by curfew, they're literally on the street. They are breaking into houses to have a place to stay, and they could be raped, molested. But you also have the component of people doing sex work in order to get the money to buy drugs. Um, I have a young lady that comes, she's only 22, she calls me mom, she scares me. Because she does perform sex work, her boyfriend beats her up if she doesn't come home with enough money, makes her sleep in an abandoned house. She really has nothing, and she doesn't have a family to go back to. I know that I'm gonna be that first person that she comes to if she needs something. She's gonna get understanding and kindness and love, and no judgment whatsoever, and she's gonna get her needs met. They can find a safe place to do safe things, then maybe that next step that they take will because I gave them a hug. Sometimes we give them a quick hug and they start crying because they're just at the lowest point that they could possibly be. People don't wake up in the morning and just decide to go inject drugs. It's always some type of tragedy. They turn to here when they turn to the streets and it just escalates from there. And you know, it's just so sad that it don't only impact the people that I'm concerned about, but what about their family? The young kids are such a high risk. The children don't want their parents to know they're in this lifestyle, and they don't have people to turn to. I wish I could save every young child. I wish I could save every addiction. But the more we get it out, the more that people feel comfortable speaking about it, getting people to understand that this is the time for you to intervene, not, not be in denial. Somebody always needs somebody. I love the work I do. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, if this was exactly what I was going to do, or was I going to do drug treatment or anything like that. And I began to really wrap my head more and more around syringe exchange. I began to believe in syringe exchange. And then as I became closer and closer to my clients, really saw firsthand what was in the streets. When you see it like that, and when you're on such a front line, you can't not want to be in the field. You can't not want to do something to help people. I have a, a sister who is in active addiction right now, and I can imagine every person that comes through, I, I feel like that's my sister, that's my cousin, that's my son, that's my best friend, and that's kind of how I, I have to treat them.